Welcome everybody. The session is to uh, is around modernizing and integrating the mainframe batch uh, with a distributed platform using uh, IBM's EOS platform for Apache Spark. Yeah, I have remembered the last two words. That's not too bad going. Um, so uh, if you have any questions during the session, if you could put them in the chat, um, then uh, uh, the guys will answer them at the end. Uh, that's their preference. Um, and uh, now we can go to the second slide. Uh, in appreciation of their um, time and effort in uh, providing this session, we ask you to give generously to uh, this year's GSE conference um, charities. So that's the RNLI, the Lifeboats um, uh, charity uh, to keep that very good uh, service operational and also guide dogs for the blind um, and you will get for every pound donated a raffle ticket um, and there are some um, you know you follow the link on your receipt uh, enter your receipt number to get that raffle ticket of course you don't have to do that you could just give um, you don't have to enter the raffle but uh, I think it's worth it. Okay, um, so I will now hand over to Valentine and Valeri um, for uh, this session. Enjoy. Okay, thank you, Anne. <clears throat> uh, hello, friends. My name is Valeri. I've been working for more than 20 years uh, for IBA Group Company as DB2 for DOS Administrator, a DevOps Engineer, Integration Manager in the area of mainframe application cloudification and modernization. In this session, today we are going to cover our approach to mainframe workload modernization combining IBM uh, DOS platform for Apache Spark and Careflow tool for modernizing EPL legacy batches. So let's start. Uh, also, guys, uh, my name is uh, Valentin. I work as Java JavaScript developer at IBA uh, in a mainframe world. So we can start the, our our presentation. And Valeria, I give you the word. Give you the floor. Okay, thank you. We are all now in some migrations or modernizations. You see, uh, mainframe area is not an exclusion. You probably didn't even notice uh, how you were already drowned in the cloud data lake or migrated into the cloud storage. Maybe you are in the way or you have had such discussion somewhere in the organizations and waiting for the manager to get started. The idea is old and didn't change much from the popularism of DevOps topics and others. We would like to save cost we need to be more flexible, we need to increase speed, save quality, and it's difficult to achieve all of them wants to have everything at the service. That's why we are all in migration, trying to find a door in such unreachable requirements to find a door from a maze. Mainframe technologies are mainly associated with the high cost, of course, super secure and powerful, powerful, but cost. And we have many possibilities today to run the same open source features and tools we need on mainframe as on distributed. But in the most frequent case, you have a combination of both. Often for data storage and processing, the customer uses not only the mainframe, but also third-party servers, for example, Unix-based servers, cloud storages. In this case, as a rule, not one computer is used, but several that are connected to one common system, a cluster. Such systems use distributed computing technologies, which are somewhat like mainframe technologies. Most customers will never fully leave the mainframe due to high reliability and computing power. Of course, with the fast development of cloud technologies, the problem of combining them with the mainframe is acute more than ever. And there is no perfect solution to this trouble. The idea is everything we do on any machine is the same, but the code is different. Programming languages and instructions might differ. 
The question is how to correctly combine these technologies as well as port code written using mainframe technologies to code using cloud technologies and vice versa to meet requirements of the cloudification and infrastructure integration. So let's have an example existed mainframe hot schedule abilities and try to match which what can be done in a cloud area in a more or less the same way. So today we will consider the following aspects. What scheduler solution exists on mainframe and in cloud? What the differences and similarities between them? How we can transform a solution with the mainframe Tivoli scheduler to an airflow solution? All of you had about batches. Uh, your application on mainframe runs either in transactional mode or in a batch mode. If it's data warehouse, it can consist of lots of batches. Another example of mainframe batches could be a requirement to perform some regular maintenance automatically in a reason of some DB2 housekeeping or in a reason of any other maintenance. GCL is a task description language. Due to its functional purpose, it has minimal expressive uh, properties as in fact a programming language. IBM Tivoli Workload Scheduler provides an ability to manage the production environment and automate many operator actions. Of course, ZOS provides a much wider range of technologies, but we will focus only on these for now because they have a great similarity with cloud technologies. So, and what we have on another side in distributed part? The first thing I would like to note is a MapReduce concept, which is used in distributed computers, computing almost everywhere. It is easy to guess that the main idea is to divide the calculations into two parts, map and reduce. The input data is pre-processed in the map step. To do this, one of the computers uh, called the main node receives the input data of the task, divides it into parts and passes it to other computers working nodes. Uh, for preprocessing. Uh, at the already step, the preprocessed data is convoluted. The main node receives uh, responses from the working nodes and forms the result based on them. Technologies uh, such as uh, Hadoop and Spark are built in this, on this principle. Uh, so what is Hadoop? Hadoop uh, is a fairly powerful framework for developing and executing distributed programs. It includes such models as Hadoop Common. It is just a set of utilities and libraries for working with distributed part. HDFS, it's a distributed file system. Uh, Yarn, it's a uh, scheduler. And uh, Hadoop MapReduce. Uh, so it's implementation of uh, MapReduce concept. The second technology is uh, Apache Spark. It is an open source framework for implementing distributed processing of un uh, unstructured and weakly structured data. Uh, uh, Spark is part of the Hadoop project ecosystem. Uh, unlike Hadoop, uh, it implements the MapReduce concept not on intermediate drives, but in RAM. Uh, that will give us a significant gain in data processing speed. It is also necessary to know therefore. This is a set of libraries for developing, planning, and monitoring workflows. The main feature of Airflow, uh, it is Python code that used to describe processes. Uh, this implies a lot of advantages for the organization of your project. Uh, in fact, uh, your ETL project is just a Python project, and you can organize it as you like taking into account the features of the infrastructure, the size of the team, and other requirements. So we all know about the scale of data that stores and proceeds on the mainframe, the thousands of TVS applications, uh, tens of thousands of GCL jobs, thousands of DB2 tables. Nobody can imagine how to apply new technologies to the old data, and this problem cannot be fully solved. So what can be offered? The first solution that comes in, uh, to mind is to modernize the old technologies to the newer style, but with several restrictions. First of all, we need to leave the main workload to the mainframe because of, because of its powerful abilities. Also, data should 
deposits in the place where it stores. And as we said, uh, the main workload will be on the main frame, but the, but the part can be moved to a distributed platform. That will improve productivity a bit. Uh, so we discussed two technologies, TVS and Airflow, and now we can, can compare them. Uh, for simplicity, we will not delve into all the possibilities of these technologies. Let's focus on the main differences between the syntax and the form of writing program code. So let's start with the review of TVS. Uh, it is a loader and it is uh, more of a description language like XML or YAML. Uh, it consists of separate logical blocks, which are separated from each other using tab characters. At the same time, the first line of the block without tabs is the name of the operator. For example, a dog, a storm, and so on. To implement the simplest task scheduler on TVS, it is a, it's enough to use the add start, add run, and add up blocks. Let's consider each of them. Uh, the first block, it, it is the add start block. Uh, it is necessary to describe general information about our ETL process. For example, the process ID, uh, description, who the owner is, and so on. It turns on at the very beginning. The second block uh, is a run block, and it's necessary for the configurations of the process itself. It contains the schedule according to which it is necessary to start the process in automatic mode. For example, if we have parameter i10 uh, equals to 2000 uh, and i days equals to 2345, that will mean uh, that the launch will be held at 8 p.m. on second, third, fourth, and fifth days of the week. So as the next uh, operator, the next block is adopt. It is necessary to add the next step. Uh, it can specify parameters such as a step description, a GCL task to start, um, the maximum return code with which the process can continue working, and also one or more at dev blocks that indicate dependent step uh, after which you can start executing the current one. Uh, this case, in this case, uh, the edit block uh, contains the parameters uh, such as pre-operation now, uh, it's ID of the step after which you can start performing the current operation, pre-WS ID, it's ID of the process from which to take this step. Uh, yes, uh, another process can be used as dependency. Uh, so let's go to the previous slide and discuss about Airflow. Uh, Airflow is a software engine, engine implemented in Python. Unlike TVS, uh, a full-fledged Python programming language is used to describe ETL processes using this technology. Uh, the Airflow doc is a regular Python file, which like the TVS loader uh, describes a sequence of steps one after another. Airflow implements a hierarchy of operators with the possibility of expansion and customization. To write your own Airflow deck, you need to create an object of the deck class that accepts parameters similar to TVS. The same description, launch schedules, ID. We can say that this is an analog of add run and add start blocks of TVS, TWS at the same time. Uh, next, operator objects are created. It can be dummy operator, Spark submit operator, Python operator, and so on. Unlike TVS, dependencies in Airflow are not specifi specified when describing operator parameters. Uh, the graph itself is built at the end using the methods of the set upstream or set down downstream. Uh, there are indicates after which step or before which step it should be executed. Um, so here we have the structure of our TVS application. Uh, we have uh, here uh, operation uh, uh, name, uh, job name that will be executed in the current step. Uh, prerequisites for the current step, for example, Studio 6. Uh, also we have here text and we can uh, export uh, the structure in batch loader uh, that was prevented on this, sli this slide. So let's uh, let's 
look at the simplest example of airflow duct. Uh, here we have two operators uh, tied to one duct that do nothing. It's dummy operators. Um, but since the example is given for clarity, this is enough. Uh, there is also a chain that defines the relationship between the operators. So uh, there is double angle bracket uh, and it's equal, equivalent to setup stream method. That is, as a start uh, statement will be executed first, then the end statement. statement. Um, so, as you can see uh, from the similarities and differences between PBS and Airflow, in general, it's quite possible to convert code written on one technologies, technology into code written in another and vice, and vice versa. Let's consider the implementation option from PBS to Airflow because it's simple, simpler. Uh, like many other technologies related to the translation, compilation, interpretation, and the analysis of code, we can do without regular expressions. However, in this case, regular expressions will be quite simple, since Tivoli is quite simple in its code structure. So what's the algorithm? Uh, on the first step, we will break the previous code in the, into the largest blocks, which are separated by an empty string. string. Uh, after that, we analyze each block and determine its operator, for example, add run and dop, and so on. We split the blocks into rows and analyze each of them for the parameter name, for example, operation no job name. In parallel, we split the string to the to into tokens and determine the value of each parameter. Then we, we write the res resulting data to the object model convert the TVS object model to the airflow object model. And after that, it's quite easy to generate from code from the presentation logic. Uh, we just simply substitute the values of the necessary parameters in the right places. So let's wrap this logic, uh, this logic in a separate package and get the following version of its use. Uh, the language used is Java. So here we have uh, the simplest example of using our model. Um, here we open the file and pass it as a constructor parameter to the parser. After that, we invoke parse method and transform raw text to an object model. Uh, next, we can pass parse code to the converter that gives that gave us the, the airflow object model. Finally, we can get raw text of Fireflow deck by invoking get raw code method. And also we can save this text to the file. So here we have uh, a result of converting and the black screen we have for graph for presented in the main pro, mainframe uh, for TVS TWS application. And on the white screen, uh, we have Airflow deck. Um, and here we have also one more example of Fireflow code, but this code was uh, really transformed from TBS batch loader. So you can see here a Spark submit operator, uh, dummy operator, some dummy operators, and the uh, graph uh, the build uh, builds uh, at the end. Uh, also we have a little demo, small demo. Let's look. So we have the file with batch loader. Um, is it how is how this look like? So or we can copy the path of this uh, file and paste it to our program. Uh, then we will remove unnecessary quotes and uh, run the build here. It's a bit squeeze, uh, freeze in IntelliJ, but it's, it works well. So here we have uh, an output. Uh, it's just a Python file. 
and we can uh, move this uh, Python file uh, to the Airflow DAX folder <clears throat> on our server where Airflow is running. So uh, here we have our server uh, and Airflow DAX. Let's move this file to Airflow DAX folder. And after that, we can uh, open uh, Airflow and uh, wait until uh, the duck will appear. So let's copy uh, ID of our duck and uh, paste it to filter field. So uh, now we can see that uh, there are no duck because Airflow needs time to rescan Airflow duck folder. So let's uh, skip uh, uh, this video a bit to, to the end. Yeah, and the duck is appeared, has appeared. We can uh, uh, open it and see the code structure, uh, the tree structure. And also we can uh, switch to tab, uh, tab with graph view and uh, look at the uh, real graph. And that's it. Um, there is one rather specific but extremely useful product for the mainframe, IBM Open Data Analytics for the TOS. It allows you to combine modern cloud analytics tools uh, with mainframe technologies. As you know, uh, one of the most popular analytic tools today is Spark. Spark gives you the ability to distribute the load on several computers that make a uh, cluster together. This product was developed by Apache Software Foundation and becomes one of the most powerful and popular analytics tools. Uh, and combining this tool with the mainframe will bring new abilities. Uh, Spark is pretty easy and comfortable to use, uh, and if it will distribute load between mainframe and some other computers, this cluster will be very powerful, smart, and flexible and explosion. Uh, using this principle, we can also embed uh, some different cloud analytic tools like Elasticsearch to mainframe computing abilities. Uh, the architecture of the classic Spark is pretty simple. There are several workstations called uh, nodes, uh, and there is some programs that control the stations, its driver. This driver makes it possible to create a Spark context, which in turn provides data processing methods. The program itself analyzes the amount of data, uh, their composition, and determines how best to split them and independently send each piece of the entire data heap to the workstation to be counted. So it's paralyzing the process like this. As a rule, such a program is put on one of the working nodes. Such a node uh, is given the name master. So here we have the small picture of the architecture. Um, here we have driver that provides Spark context to each working node. Uh, it, uh, each working node ha has uh, his own executor uh, that executes uh, a task from a task area. Uh, and this program uh, contains contained uh, in uh, main work to node. And that's how it works. So, Valerie, I give you the Hello. Yeah, sure. So let's talk a bit about IBM Open Data Analytics for ZOS architecture. There are three main components. ZOS is so the Spark, ZOS is so the mainframe data service, and ZOS is so the Anaconda. So we installed and configured Spark for DOS, following us to combine modern cloud analytics tools with these mainframe technologies. And that's how uh, Spark shell inside Unix system services looks like. So the main proposition that uh, we want to provide today is that we can transform existing mainframe scheduler solutions to modern and popular Airflow deck 
and use them to support mainframe jobs with the help of PAC. Uh, let's look at the architecture of our system in which we have already reached a certain level of application modernization. There is a cloud platform in this architecture, but a significant place remains with the mainframe, which as a platform for the most important business applications, we do not give up. Both platforms allow us to implement ETL processes uh, efficiently using modern approaches. We have created a Spark cluster in a cloud. We can use the capabilities of Kubernetes or OpenShift to orchestrate Docker containers in which Spark applications are running. We develop our Spark application code using modern programming languages such as Python and Scala. We work with data that is now stored not only in relational databases, but in a cloud platform, for example, in DB2 Warehouse on cloud. At the head of our data lake can be a cloud object storage built on S3 storage with distributed parquet files. Since the start of ETL processes is regulated, they are started on time in a certain sequence, then we use Airflow as a scheduler. It performs Airflow docs consisting of their steps of Spark tasks, respectively data transformations. Imagine that we have already upgraded and transferred many of the processes previously implemented as legacy on the mainframe to the cloud architecture. In this, I remind you, our migration tool helps us in many ways. We help uh, develop new transformation processes from scratch, in addition to those already used earlier. Thus, we now perform many of the information warehouse components in a cloud architecture. However, back to the mainframe, what uh, is its place in this architecture? Transactional data is created and quantified on the mainframe. We still store a large amount of business critical data in DB2 for ZOS, but we no longer want to support and develop new ETL processes in the way we have been doing for decades. We want a modern approach and modern tools, just like modern programming languages. In the same time, we continue to adhere to the principle that data should be processed where it is generated and stored. Spark cluster, which we built on the mainframe platform, help us in this. We use the computing power of the mainframe, its specialized CPUs, and the amount of memory. How can we combine two Spark cluster in a single living organism that organically exists together and complements each other with its capabilities? We can use the Spark cluster in the cloud architecture at the client to execute the Spark job with the connection to the master on the mainframe. However, a more acceptable approach is to use its other Levy REST server. What about the data on the mainframe? Probably more than 90% of your data is in DB2 for DOS. Data service server visualize your data in DB2 tables and make them available as virtual tables loaded into data frames for subsequent processing by Spark applications. It should also be noted that we can also interact with the cloud storage from Spark applications on the mainframe using the corresponding APIs. The same approach is used to interact with other components of the cloud platform if we have such a need. So we talk about the fact that Isoda Levy makes it much easier for us to initiate the execution of Spark application code on the mainframe. It allows you to control the process from the outside, for example, from application in the cloud platform. It totally makes it possible to run Spark application in two modes. Batch mode allows you to directly send the program code file to the Spark cluster on the mainframe, for example, a JAR archive file with the Scala application or API file with the Python Spark application source code. We, need, we initiate execution on the Spark cluster on the mainframe with the REST API call. We monitor the execution status and wait for completion. Also using the corresponding REST API calls, we receive data in the form of JSON object familiar to a modern developer. If our business logic is easily broken down into a subsequent subsequence of separate operations, then we use session mode. 
This mode reassembles an interactive one. We perform a set of expressions as separate operations and monitor the result of its execution before proceeding to perform the next action in the same session. We simulate interactive mode from an application executing a sequence of REST API calls. Once again, we know that Livia allows us not to worry about the capability of the version of Spark components in the cloud and on the mainframe. It gives us an API for easy interaction between two different platforms of our architecture. On this slide, we see just the REST API call in a CURL format today is the Livy server to transfer the application code in Scala for execution in a batch mode in the form of jar ACI file. It's nice to work with Spark on mainframe because the interface is similar to developers are available on the mainframe. So you see a fragment of the Spark UI screenshot showing the stage of Spark execution of the task initiated via Livy. Your developers will not pair the mainframe if they are not familiar with this platform. After all, everything is familiar to them from, from the programming language to the well-known UI. I think all Python developers are familiar with the REST library. It is one of the most downloadable libraries. It allows you to execute HTTPS GET POST requests and exchange data in JSON format. What we need is to interact with this other Livy in a session mode for this. Let's remember where we started. Remember our use case. We have a complex system, information warehouse built on legacy principles, consists of thousands of DB2 tables and thousands of PWS applications for processing interfaces and data transformation. A typical sequence of operations, loading interfaces from remote system or from a transactional system, extract and aggregate data, sort data, and upload to data tables for reports. We realized that the actions performed are similar, and there are lots of them. We want to modernize, but we understand that rewriting from scratch is a super time-consuming process. We highlight similar components to create templates for them to reuse. We are writing automation, a Python migration tool that translates legacy structure objects onto objects of a modern system based on Spark application. So what can a typical use case look like <clears throat> in a new system where we have found a worthy place for a mainframe, where we use its undeniable advantages of the most secure and highly accessible system with efficient workload management. What kind of Spark task templates do we need in the new system into which we strive to transfer legacy objects by automating them, this process as much as possible? So here is our possible use case. In our scenario, we store the business critical work workload on the mainframe, as well as the data interrelational database on the mainframe. We replace the extract of data from DB2 into data sets by a scale query with the virtualization of DB2 data and loading into the Spark data frame for processing in memory simultaneously on several Spark cluster nodes. Spark SQL in data frames allows you to perform transformation and aggregation of data in memory in parallel efficiently on large volumes, which is characteristic of the big data concept. Data is no longer uploaded into data sets, is not sorted into data sets to be loaded back to the DB2 table. The result of our transformation is formed into a data frame from which we can save the result to a delimiter file, to a JSON format object, or send it to the cloud object storage for subsequent processing by the Spark cluster in the cloud platform. All our application code can now be written in Python, including a description of the airflow deck structure, Spark task, 
for implementing business logic on the cloud platform side. Spark tasks that we send and execute via delivery API on the Spark cluster of the mainframe. Isoda Anaconda allows us to execute Python code of our Spark jobs. The DBC model supplied with the mainframe data service component allows you to access virtual tables from Python application accordingly. Frankly speaking, we understand that for the time being, we are still at the beginning of the road. The functionality of our migration tool is still incomplete. However, already now, we can create a config data set which, with a list of PWS applications and in one run of the GCL task, upload to the library data set all the PWS applications to be modernized in the form of, of control operators, which are old PWS uh, batch loader. Already, the Python migration tool will parse all batch loaders in one click and generate Python code. When deployed, we will see in the Airflow UI for each TWS application the corresponding Airflow deck with the same internal structure. This is already a great help to the developer. He gets a code template that does not need to be formed from scratch. We have a basis for filling with the business logic. We have a plan and what to continue the research. We have formed a roadmap according to which we would like to refine the migration tool so that it is understands the entire sets of PWS which loader console operators. For typical operations with DB2 for ZOS, such as a struct by SQL query or cross loader or sorting in data sets and loading with the load utility, we plan to implement automatic generation of Spark jobs, templates, with integration of SQL queries from legacy in the form of Spark SQL and data frame. In the future, we, would, uh, we want to look at other products and tenders, for example, Control-M instead of PWS or Argo workflows instead of Airflow as a more cloud-native solution for scheduling in cloud. We would like our migration tool to help companies on their way to modernize mainframe applications. If we manage to implement our plans, we are ready to play the migration tool into the Git repository as an open source solution. If you are interested in our experience, we could help you solve the following tasks. Installation and configuration of Spark cluster on the mainframe, including the necessary software products and components. Support from our system programmers to configure and monitor the system for performance issues, including the required VLM settings, as well as high availability. Help with analysis of your current system for ideas and approaches to modernization. We consider implementing a pilot project to modernize small applications and transfer business logic to implementation in Spark. We believe in our migration tool and want to see that someday it will help in the modernization of real applications. Everybody can start thinking about something similar today in many mainframe areas. We just shared our idea. We know that all works fine currently on the mainframe, but how to save this all and support in future. Thank you guys, it's now time for questions. Do we have any questions or comments, please? I have um, made it possible for you to unmute yourself and ask your questions. Okay, if there are no questions, um, then uh, I would like to thank our presenters and also to um, uh, a nice appreciation there I, in, the, in the chat. Um, I would also like to remind you to 
fill in your session feedback um, and also to donate generously in appreciation of the session that you've just uh, participated in. Thank you, every, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for listening, for listening this session. And really, I look forward to see your feedback on this session. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks for attention. For attention. OK, so uh, I'll end the session now then. Uh, this is your last chance to shout in. Okay. I uh, hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and are enjoying GSE, uh, the GSE conference. Yeah, don't forget to fill in the feedback. And uh, session length, uh, five is the uh, optimum answer, not nine. Okay, just a reminder. It's uh, a slightly differently worded question. Okay. Enjoy your day. This was session 3AH.